Welcome, everybody, and good evening. Um, I'm going to start this, the public hearing this evening from the Committee on Finance. Um, we're going to start off by um, beginning the process. We're going to have the city clerk talk about some technical aspects, and then we'll talk about how we proceed with the public hearing itself with the rules and engagement. So first, I'd like to do, let's start the meeting. It's uh, June 9th, 2020, Tuesday. It's the Committee on Finance public hearing. Madam Clerk, can you um, call the roll? Present. 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 Here. Thank you, Madam. Um, next, I'd like to do is have the, Mr. Clerk, could you please um, explain or elaborate on some of the technical aspects on this evening's Zoom meeting. Sure. Um, thank you, everybody, for your patience. We just uh, are very delayed today because we increased the capacity and had to switch uh, to a different platform. Uh, we discovered we would need uh, more room, so we needed to use a new hosting ID. Uh, it's quite uh, today. Um, when you bring up the list of participants, it will show the name of the panel. If you click the raise hand button, um, and we will be able to see that you're interested in speaking tonight. Um, if you're not attending via Zoom, you're just calling in via telephone, you don't have access to I'm sorry, we can't hear him. Mr. Chairman. Have that muted all Oh, no, I need that open. That's the only mic we have. Sorry. Um, if you're, if you just are calling in via phone, um, you can send a text message. If you don't have access to the raise hand button that pops up underneath the names when you click on the participants button, you can send a text message to 401-400-1682. And we'll also put you in the queue to speak tonight. Um, and so now I will turn it over to the chairman and let him um, discuss, um, explain how the process will work this evening. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Um, I'd like to also next is uh, Kenny Chevrini, the city solicitor, on the line. Down, bottom left, bottom left, all the way down. Yeah. Thanks. Ken Chevrini, are you on the line? If you're not, oh, why don't you text me? Make sure we have the right number then. While we're waiting for the city solicitor, what I'd like to do is talk about the public hearing. It's a public hearing uh, that we're going to be listening um, to the public and giving them opportunity to um, forward their views on the proposed um, City of Providence budget, tax levy, and spending plan. Depending on the number of people as it's growing, the way the process will work is I will go down the list and anybody has their hand up will have an opportunity to speak. We will start off with, I will give each person uh, three minutes to speak. And then if, if it does block from that all multiple hundred plus choose to speak, then we're going to have to make the, uh, make the time allotment a little bit lower because then we will turn into, we'll be talking all the way to another eight or 10 hours. I want to make sure everybody has an opportunity. So we'll start off with three minutes, and then we'll happen as I now the identification marker that's on the right side of the Zoom board. You'll have three minutes, I'll give it to you, and then when your time is up, if it's over, then you'll be unmuted, and then I'll go into the next person. I ask everybody to be succinct. Also, I ask that if there are groups or organizations that all have a similar same message, if you appoint maybe a spokesperson, a spokespeople, multiple, and they can talk about the different views, and a lot, this way you can be more efficient on what you're thinking. Also, this is not a question and answering public hearing. This is simply a hearing for the public to give us 
give the council and the city its feedback on the proposed budget. With that said, has the city solicitor joined us yet? Yes, sir, I'm here. City solicitor, for the record, could you please state to the public and for the record um, why the city council committee on finance can conduct a public hearing on this on this um, Zoom webinar? Mr. Chairman, uh, due to the pandemic, uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic, the governor, by executive order, has suspended the Open Meetings Act requirements, uh, which would mandate the body be held, the session be held uh, in person. Uh, due to the governor's uh, executive order suspending the Open Meetings Act requirements, we are allowed to have the meeting conducted via Zoom. So it is perfectly consistent with the governor's order. Mr. Chair, did I lose you? Mr. Chair? Mr. Severini, can you hear me, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, thank you. Um, then let me repeat myself. Um, Madam Clerk, we're going to move to the next stage of this hearing. Can you please read, um, read into the record items one, two, three, and four into the record so we can begin the public discussion? Madam Clerk. Number one, an ordinance amending ordinance number 330 for chapter 2019 83, adopted July 9, 2019. I'm putting a section in collection of 2019 taxes in a sum not less than $351,826,648 and not more than $357,984,569. Taxes are based on that we have President Sabina Matos present. We have um, President Pro Tem Correa present. We have Council, Councilman Salvatore present, Councilwoman Kerwin present, Councilman La Fortune present, Councilwoman Miller present. And I, I think I put, I know, oh, Councilman uh, Pedro S. Rinal present. Also, the treasurer is present from body. The internal order is present <clears throat> um, at this time, and the chief of staff is present. In fact, I want, if I, did I miss any council members? No. Okay. Thank you. Um, Councilman Anthony, do you have a question? Or can I I proceed? do. We're, we're not able to. Yes. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the council people are unable to start to show their, um, start their videos. Is there a reason we're being prevented from doing that? That I do not know. Okay. The clerk is working on that as we speak. Yeah, I can answer that question. This is a, this is a new host ID that we're using and it has some settings. So I'm trying to enable that if you're able to let me know that Right. He's working on it, Councilman. He, he's slowly but surely. There you go. We see you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, I'd ask, I'd ask 
Uh, and one second, remember, I'd ask everybody to bear with the clerk. Uh, the clerk, they're doing the best they can. They uh, they uh, expanded and uh, expanded the uh, capacity, and they're working on the technical aspects and they're doing an excellent job. Just so we could bear with them. That's all I ask. Mr. I Chairman, excuse me, this is Mr. Mancini. I'm having the same difficulty. I'm not able to access the video. Thank you. And then I think I see the deputy majority. <laughs> Thank you, um, Mr. Chairman. I'm joining you tonight. Good to see you guys. Great. Thank you. Deputy Leader. Thank you. Deputy majority Leader Harris is present. Great. Thank you. Okay, and the clerk will continue to work out that aspect of the difficulty. Um, what I'd like to do is begin with, as I can see as we're moving along, uh, the, the public hearing process and start taking testimony. Um, the first uh, individual providing testimony will be Mr. Larry Mancini. But I'll ask, let everybody understand that when I acknowledge you, please state your name for the record. And if it's you work for the city, your position and your address, and then your three, and then the three minutes will begin. If you go past the three minutes, you will be muted automatically. Just be aware of that. Okay, Mr. Mancini, you have the mic for three minutes, sir. Please identify yourself and and information for the record. Thank you, Mr. Chairman Lawrence J. Mancini. I am the city's chief financial officer, and Mr. Chairman, members of the finance committee, thank you for this uh, opportunity this evening. And um, I'm here this evening to speak in support of and on behalf of the budget ordinances that are presently before the Committee on Finance and part of this evening's public hearing on the proposed fiscal year 21 budget. Mr. Chairman, as you and your committee are aware, the administration on behalf of the mayor, Mayor Alorza, has filed a proposed budget on April 28th and was received by the council on May 1st and then referred to this committee. Since that date, the administration has come before the Committee on Finance and has made presentations of the various departments. During this time, we have reviewed revenue and expenditures of various departments, and we have been governed by the process that is generally afforded to the administration. The budget as submitted was predicated on information known to the administration at the time of the submission. Certainly, this is still, there is still more information and more important work to continue, particularly as we await further information that relates to federal and state revenue appropriations. What is, however, clear, Mr. Chairman, is that the proposed tax levy as submitted was based upon values as of December 31st, 2018, and was a levy that was submitted with a no tax increase. And we continue to support that as I trust the council does as well. With that said, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, it is my recommendation that we support the adoption of the tax levy when we move to the committee, uh, the meeting on the rise as proposed, and that will allow the city to stabilize its cash flow with the receipt of timely tax payments from the new tax le levy. I wish to thank you and the Finance Committee and the entire City Council for your consideration of the budget process thus far, and I look forward to the continued completion of our important work ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Thank you, Mr. Mancini. Next on the list is, and it's just the one name, it says Anna, A-N-N-A. -N -N -A. Do we have maybe some a phone number or something I can at least identify to help identify? I have an Anna who's asked to me to speak. Anna, are you there? All right. Well, Anna, are you there? Okay, we'll, we'll move on to the next one. We can connect with Anna, we will. The next person is? Let me see, I can't see the whole name. Timothy, Timothy Simmons. Mr. Hello. Simmons, are you present? Is that Tim Simmons? Tim Simmons, am I saying it right? Yeah, yeah, Simmons speaking. Great, perfect. Mr. Simmons, you have three minutes, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, well, firstly, um, I'd like to say that I really fucking hate niggas and cunts. Hey. I guess I said I guess that's it for that this time. Move on, Mr. Clark. Do we have a Jack Lanza? Jack Lanza. Hello, um yep. Um Jack Lanza, uh resident of Providence. And I've got a complaint. 
Why the Especially fuck are you guys you know, raising the fucking taxes? Spend the money on better mics, you fucking wops. And yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Next, we have maybe is correct, Kathy G. Johnson. Hello, this is Kathy Johnson. I am a a Providence resident. Um, I believe that we should um, defund the police and we should be, be putting more money towards Providence public schools who are currently um, facing a state takeover and are having a $4 million cut in their personal budget that is cutting staff that we desperately need right now. Thank, Thank you. you, Ms. John. Thank you. Thank you for participating. Next, I have a Peter Munez. Munoz. Sorry? Munoz. Munoz. Is Peter Munoz present? Uh, hello? 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 Uh, no, 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 no. Hello? Peter Munoz? Munoz? Yeah, I do. Have the mic. Am I good? Yep, you're on, you're on, you're live, sir. Okay, hi. My name is Peter Munoz. I live on 101 Leicester Avenue. And today, I would like to talk about why, why the, we should put the taxes towards towards like the towards like public schools and that because with all this George Floyd, aka my favorite porn star, but all like with all this stuff going on, like why can't we just like poor George Floyd, bro? Like, they're... I can't. Like, I don't. I don't think that. That's okay. Mr. Munez, are you still there, sir? Uh, no, I muted him. I mean, he's the one that has the phone up. He's... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, so <laughs> oh, I was saying, like, with the George Floyd, everything with George, guys. we should okay. put, like, the money towards, like, public and bars oh, and God, stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, like people... Guys, shut up. Shut up. You, know you can just say we can't... I'm sorry, sir. We can't deal with the background noise. We're going to have to move on. So. Next, I have... Who we have next? Brian Peters, Patterson? Okay. Next, Mr. Brian Patterson. Mr. Brian Patterson, are you there, sir? Uh, hello? Uh, my my name is Brian. I live in 1541 Public Work Drive, District 3 in the great state of Tennessee. And I used to work in... I mean, do you want to keep him going? Or... Oh, excuse me, can I continue? Yep, you. Mr. Patterson, you uh, have three minutes. All right, uh, I used to work in a local supermarket until I got fired, and the reason will shock you. It was an absolutely ridiculous and disgusting reason. My employer was he fined a huge tax because he attacked a nigger publicly. We sh Unreal. Dear me, we should kill all niggers. Fuck you, and fuck this guy. Turn him off. All right. Good one. Just, uh, Mr. You. Chairman, if I may. Thank you. Hang on one second, please. Uh, should the clerk really reemphasize uh, what the purpose of the meeting is so that people don't get confused? Thank you, Councilman. I, I think we have. We told them it's on the budget and it's a public hearing. And, it, and it's a great opportunity to express uh, whatever difference they have with the way that budget is being handled. Uh, but to take it to that level is just really a waste of time. Well, I, I recognize that, Councilman Espinel. I, we have to keep rolling along, and everybody who ha who's had their hand up at this time, the public I hearing. I understand. So we'll, we'll do our part, and we ask what I'll ask everybody who has their hand up and who's asking to speak. If you could, we understand some people may be angry, some people may not be. I'd ask that the people that you use, you know, hopefully appropriate language, hopefully be respectful in, in your, your um, statements, and um, hopefully be productive. Um, this is about the budget for the facing the city of Providence and looking for constructive statements or uh, ideas that can help the people of Providence. I'd ask everybody to, you know, uh, uh, you know, all due respect, 
to not use an inappropriate language at this time, if, um, and to remain uh, on an appropriate, uh, that, you know, remain and use respectful language. President Pro Tem, did you want to say something, sir? Yes, Mr. Chairman. I mean, I have to agree with, uh, you know, my colleague, Councilman Espinall, and as well as, uh, you know, the words that you just said as well. I mean, I'm here on this public hearing. I'm a public servant, and I want to listen to what everybody has to say, but I want everybody to be polite and respectful to everybody, uh, uh, all races and whatnot. And I don't, I don't think this is uh, acceptable, this type of uh, language and uh, behavior. So uh, if the uh, clerk could monitor it and kind of like cut this off, uh, before it gets out of hand, I, I mean, I don't want to participate in something like this at all. This is this isn't what I'm here for, and I got elected to do to listen to this type of language uh, from individuals. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, uh, at this time, I'd like to ask the uh, city solicitor uh, that if this continues, if it's within our legal rights to uh, actually terminate the public portion of this hearing. I Mr. Chair? Mr. City Chair? Solicitor. City Solicitor? Mr. Chair? Yeah, City Solicitor, I can hear you. Can you hear us? Okay. I, I think we have to conduct the hearing, but, I mean, of the of the five calls that you've taken, all were inappropriate and filled with hate and racist language. So I think at some point we should uh, conclude the meeting if this behavior continues. Chair, may I say? May I have a word? I I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the la give you the last word because it's important that we get to the public hearing so no one questions the process. Councilwoman no. Fortune. Chair, I actually think that if I think that we've had enough, and this is in addition to the the comments, the racist anti sem um, um feminist comments. There's also um or questions so called. There's also comments in the Q and A that are incredibly offensive. Um, and um, inappropriate. Um, and so, and I think with everything that's been happening it, throughout our nation and within our communities, this is an awful time to have to deal with this. I, I really don't wanna hear the N word again. And I don't wanna see another comment from a racist person being posted. None of us deserve this. And I understand where we are public officials, we sign up for this, but I think we also have to take a stance when, when people are behaving in this type of manner for us to shut it down. Councilman, I think we're all in agreement that the language that's being used so far is extremely inappropriate and unfair to everybody in this process. I agree with you wholeheartedly. And it's sad that instead of having constructive conversation or ideas for our proposed budget, folks are choosing to use this as a form for hate speech and inappropriate language. But we're going to try to do our part. And we Utilize inappropriate language out. The clerk will then immediately mute and I'll move on to the next person. On, on the other end, I know there's probably n numerous people over here who've been waiting who probably want to speak and want to give their inappropriate manner. And I want to make sure I give them that opportunity also. So we're going we're to keep moving along to see how it, how it goes. And the clerk will mute people who use inappropriate language. So I'll go to the next person. I think is is. It, is it Okama F? Okama F, are you on? Are you available? Okama F. Yes, I'm here. I'm here. Thank you. So I'd ask, All right. ask you appropriate language, and you have the mic, sir. You you have the mic. All right. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Os Okana, Zimbabwe, and I would like to talk about the tax levy and why we should why we shouldn't support it. The tax levy is going to be used to just buy hookers and cocaine. Lagoza is going. Mr. Okay. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, this is Councilman Salvatore. My recommendation, Mr. Chairman, is to receive guidance from the governor's office, the state, uh, the Department of Health, and the mayor's office in conjunction with the city council to move forward with a traditional public hearing. This is absolutely ridiculous. Nobody should be subjected to this language and this hate. I understand that time is of the essence and I appreciate that. However, it is not fair to the public and to the members of the council to have to sit through this, this hate after everything that we've been through. This is, this is completely unacceptable. My recommendation is shut this down and let's come up with a better solution. 
Thank you, Councilman Salvatore, for being noted. I'm going, next I have on the list is uh, area. Sam's area there. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, committee members and council members. I appreciate the opportunity to speak about this year's city council budget, which is a core responsibility of this committee and this council. More generally, this committee and this council have the paramount responsibility to protect the viability of the city's finances in both the long and short term. I observed a portion of last week's finance committee meeting concerning the unfunded pension liability in which this committee stated once again, it is a serious problem the city has to address. I was pleased to see the council engaged Ernest Almonte. He advised the Tavares administration during 2011 to 13 to craft reforms that reduce the unfunded pension liability by $170 million. As the committee discussed that night, the numbers shifted since that time when the city changed actuaries. However, the savings that we achieved at that time with the support of a majority of the city council resulted in $170 million in actual savings. This was very hard work, but it showed what can be done with determination and focus. At last year's hearing, I suggested to this committee that the city had the opportunity through the revaluation to allocate additional funds to the pension, which could help correct for shortfalls in the city's annual contributions uh, recommended by the actuary during the period of 1996 to 2010. While I respect the council's decision to reject that particular policy suggestion, the failure to do anything at all is not an acceptable substitute. Instead, I respectfully submit that it is this committee's responsibility to take this urgent problem seriously and develop a plan to address it. There are alternatives, but they become more difficult the longer the city council lets this problem fester and get worse. This year's budget may not provide a lot of room for action as was present last year, but there are still opportunities to do something. The ultimate question any elected official has to answer to the voters is this. Are we better off today than we were four years ago? For my first term on the city council during 2011 to 14, the answer was yes. We reduced the unfunded pension liability by $170 million. For my second term during 2015 to 18, I regret to say the answer was that we, through our inaction, left the city worse off by failing to do anything about the mounting unsustainable payments. This term city council and this term's finance committee still has two and a half years to do better than last term city council and last term finance committee. For the long-term well-being of our city, I urge you please to make the most of this opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Zer. And, uh, Mr. Zer, can you state your, your address? Are you a province resident? Sure, I, I reside at 330 Grotto Avenue. Thank you. Next. Hang on one second. Uh, is Nico Page there? Nico Page? Yeah, can you hear me? Nico Page? Yes. Could you please state your name for the record and your address? And you, you will have, you'll have you'll have three minutes. Hi, my name is Nico Page. I live at 99 Sheldon Street. Um, I, like many others, have been following really closely the news and participating in the recent protests in the city and learning a lot about police brutality. Um, as such, in recognition of the fact that I am also new to abolition work, um, I would mostly will be reading uh, the words of others, but I would like to use my time to advocate for defunding the Providence Police. Um, first, I'll read part of the statement um, by Charlotte Abbasi and Black and Pink. Um, both in the present and historically, police forces have been ineffective at keeping local communities safe by perpetuating the oppression of residents or people of color, undocumented, mentally ill, disabled, and LGBTQ+. The Providence has received a $700,000 grant to formulate a behavioral health response team. That amount does not stack up to the nearly $90 million proposed for police in 2021. Um, I'll repeat, $90 million. 
The current budget proposal has allocated $154,450 on guns and ammunition. I've only been called a faggot 37 times. By who? I don't know. Who said that? Um, you, sir, um, sorry, you, I don't know. You still, you, still have, you, still have the, you still have the mic. Okay. Um, $1 million, $461,620 for 50 new police recruits and $963,626 for uniforms and quote unquote wearing apparel, presumably including more of the officer riot gear that is currently being used to suppress peaceful protests. And I would like to ask the city council to just imagine um, what could happen to the city and this amazing state if we were to advocate, allocate those funds to um, initiatives such as um, low-income and public housing, education, and resources for formerly incarcerated individuals. Um, there are a number of organizations that have already been working hard at things like these in Providence, um, including um, DARE and Black and Pink. And um, I would also like to direct um, the council to the AIDS abolition platform, uh, which was formulated in response to the Eight Can't Wait campaign because I believe that many of the reforms that um, have recently been proposed um, across, the, thank you, across um, the country will actually lead to bigger police departments like body cams and um, more training actually only allocates more funds towards police when we need to be advocate, allocating those funds towards things that will um, prevent um, the need for a police force that is abusive. Um, and so from the AIDS abolition website, I will say that at its root, policing is a system designed to uphold oppression. 1,000 people are killed by police every year and black people are murdered at three times the rate of white people. Um, the only way to prevent the murder of innocents by um, the police is Eco by Page. defunding them. Eco Page, your, your time is up. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. Try Evan uh, Schooner. Evan, Hello, please. my good, my good. What's the name, address? Name and address, please. Um, my name is Evan Schooner. I live on 101 Malik Avenue, and I would like to say, like, about like how we can use the tax funds, and like we can use the tax funds. We should lower the tax funds of the police and use it for more like reasonable things, like education and giving giving people in prison more education education, and help rebuild the city because without it, this can go haywire. And we don't want another like, big outbreak like, like what's going on right now in the real world. So I'm suggesting like, I know so, I know so like we should use more like on like, for example, like Ryan said, like the one, the one who looks like Miss, <laughs> Oh, uh, what was I saying? Sorry, sorry about that. Like, Mrs. Puff, like... <laughs> we should use the money for hookers and... Oh, Mr. Chairman? Mr. Chairman, I think we should, as Councilman Salvatore mentioned earlier, I think we should, I think we should definitely have a public hearing. Councilman, this is not a free for all. Hang on a second, please. All right. Ne uh, next we have, is it Jackson? Oh, excuse me. Who's next? Jackson Lawson? Jackson Is Jackson Lawson on the line? Okay, uh, let's move on. Tennessee's back, old faggots. Yeah, yeah, man. Mr. Oh, this is ridiculous. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair. I, I, I have heard the calls. I recommend that we shut it down, either reschedule or rethink how we proceed to comply with the public hearing requirement. Uh, I will. I have been in contact with the solicitor. And I suggest that um, it, we shut it down right now. We'll reschedule and come up with an alternative. Uh, this is absolutely ridiculous and totally inappropriate and insulting to, to all the good people that have uh, decided to partake in this. 
um, public hearing. Mr. Chair. So um, I recognize the city solicitor's statement. I'm going to keep moving on with the public hearing. It's imperative that I guess we get through this and then we get to the meeting on the rise so I can address the levy and move it out of committee. So um, there, unfortunately, sometimes in order for the greater good, we have to soldier on to unfortunately um, trying circumstances. I am concerned that, that the um, levy will be in jeopardy, the city's ability to the council to get it up and out and vote on it, and we'll lose more time on this. Um, it's very important. It takes many days to post a public hearing, and therefore will put the tax levy in jeopardy. I ask my council colleagues to, unfortunately, uh, bear with this, uh, this matter, um, but the public hearing is still moving forward at this time, and I duly note the city's statement, but it would put the timetable and the financial health of the city in jeopardy if I, can, if I reschedule this public hearing. We're going to keep going. Uh, Council Chair, with all due respect, we're giving people a platform to perpetuate hate and racism and anti-Semitism. And, and, I, and I understand, you know, trying to keep this mo uh, moving, but how much, how, how, how much more do we, do we and also the people of the public have to hear this? This is out of control. Woman, this is not a discourse. This is a public hearing. I'm sorry. I recognize your, your concern. But at this time, I am not going to jeopardize the city's tax structure and the ability to get the tax bills out. I recognize that. Unfortunately, we have folks that do not want to participate in a respectful manner. Whether we do it tonight, tomorrow, or a month from now, unfortunately, we'll have the same similar individuals potentially looking to disrupt the process. So I ask all the council colleagues, until you are recognized, you do not have a right to jump in. It's a, we're in the middle of a public hearing. Thank you. Next on. So who do I have left? I have Alisa Bishop. Alisa Bishop? I'm saying That's that right. right. Hello? Yes. Hello, Alisa Bishop. Bishop. Say your name and where you live. And then you have three minutes, please. Uh, uh, my name is Alyssa Bishop. I live at 25 Harris Road. Um, I wasn't planning on speaking. I was I was hoping that there were enough um, people who were going to be on this call to be being productive. But I think that the testimony so far speaks to the unease that is kind of the undercurrent of where we are right now. And, you know, I, I would really understand that, that this is really only going to get worse. So I know that... The budget was initially crafted and obviously um, proposed in something, I, I don't remember what you said, April 28th, but I would really love for the committee to understand, given the context, you know, what can be reallocated, where we can start to, to challenge ourselves to really move forward and think about what is inflexibility, how do we start to understand, given this unrest, I mean, we've spent the past, what, 30 minutes look, or listening to terrible language um, racist language, um, you know, this is a real problem in the country and in Providence. And so trying to understand, and, and, and I would hope that the committee challenges themselves to understand, you know, what of that funding that, that's, you know, penciled in right now, whether that's 1033 funding, whether that's funding for new equipment that, you know, potentially could be new riot gear against some of the peaceful protesting that I've seen, whether that's you know, seemingly very superfluous funding for an equestrian unit, equestrian training and supplies, or whether that's something that maybe um, could be taken to the next level or adopted, such as looking at police pensions and wondering whether that funding actually goes towards legal fees versus taxpayer fees. Um, you know, I think that this is a real opportunity for Providence to, to put you know, itself on the map and to take a stand and to do the right thing and to really say that, you know, this is something that's not going to happen here and that we do not accept 
or police brutality and that we are going to reallocate some of that funding that's going to the police force and maybe overfunded in this police force and really put it towards things that really help our community and the funds and the initiatives and the programs that um, that means something to the people that actually live here. So I'll, I'll end with the system, you know, really the police system, the police force was designed to operate in a way that it is, you know, is exactly, it's exactly, it, it's doing exactly what it was designed for. Um, time to fundamentally um, abolish it, rebuild it from the ground up and understand what it means for the community and what Providence actually needs um, to make itself better. Thank you. You don't want to listen to anybody. I don't know if you want to thank, sell thank you. whatever, but thank, thank you, Mr. Fine. So um, I see that we no longer have any more hands up. There is no one, no more individuals who are looking to speak at this time. Do I have any uh, council members who want to speak on the matter? Okay. Nobody so said this, anything. So at this time, there is no more hands up. I am now officially calling the public hearing at um, City Council Community on Finance public hearing concerning on June 9, 2020, concerning the budget. We're going to officially call this. Mr. Clerk, correct me if I'm wrong. There are no more hands up. With that, I'm now hereby calling the public hearing adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.